All right, hold on. Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Mark and Regina. And um, today we're gonna be doing... <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Your name is funny. My name is Mark, Mark is funny. Mark and Regina. Mark and Regina. Yeah, Mark and Regina. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. Now, Cocology, we're gonna be doing, Cocology is a game of self-discovery. Cocology is a series of psychological games designed to reveal your hidden attitudes about sex, family, love, work, and more. It's about some. Uh, it was. It was made by two Japanese dudes, and they're oh, really smart. I hate this game already. <laughs> you, oh come on! It was a Tada. Whatever. Two Japanese dudes. All right. Ready? Let's go. All right. This is the greatest mystery. I've already sent this to my sisters, so and then we play on the on the on the email thing. Okay. Nobody really. And you do at home as well. You guys. Do your own, uh, you choose as well, and then you'll find out about yourself as well. So and burn the video. And burn the video. Oh, at least my side of it. Okay, fine. So we are, we're actually adding value to people's lives. That's what we're doing. And YouTube, we might even make like, we could make literally dozens of dollars a month. <laughs> I'm throw in my Halloween. All right, let's go. All right, ready? The Greatest Mystery, page 125. Nobody really likes to dwell on this subject, but take just a moment now to think about what happens to us after we die. Everybody dies. Newsflash, everybody dies. Everywhere I go, I'm like, oh, that person's gonna die, that little baby's gonna die someday, everyone's gonna die. <laughs> okay, what happens is after we die? Does the soul move on to another world? Or is death the absolute and final extinction of the self? Do you believe in heaven and hell, or that the soul is reborn in a new body on earth? People have been wondering about these same questions for thousands of years, but in the end, we have to admit that we just don't know. Except we do know, because we're Christians, okay. In this life, death remains the greatest mystery of all. Not to us, we know what's gonna happen. You know, people die, then they're asleep, Christ returns, they wake up, the good people go up there, the bad people thousand years later die. Boom, you suck. Okay, <laughs> read your Bibles, people, it's not that hard. Revelation, come on. Anyway, in this scenario, imagine that the soul survives after death, and it does, but the soul is not immortal. The soul is not immortal, as uh, some people teach, as the Catholic Church in the Middle Ages taught, the soul is immortal. The, the immortality of the soul. No, only Christ gives life. The tree of life uh, is guarded by angels with a sword going every which way, right? Nobody is singing the tree of life, so no one can live it forever, right? Until so on the uh, so you know, ye shall not surely die, is what the, what the serpent said. Ye shall not surely die. So if you believe that, that, that you won't die, the soul is immortal, then you believe the serpent. It's that simple. It's that simple. Because if it was more complicated than that, I wouldn't be able to understand it. <laughs> uh, people. You don't have to be a genius to understand the Bible. People think you got to go to, to uh, some other uh, person to, to learn about the Bible. No, you can read the Bible. There are a lot of different translations. You can read the Bible and learn it for yourself. That's simple. Anyway, in this scenario, imagine that the soul survives after death. What form do you imagine it takes? What form, okay, what form do you imagine your soul takes once it is freed from the body? Number one, the soul, your soul, and you can close your eyes if you want, whatever you need to really think about it. The soul is the same size and shape as its body was in life. The soul is the same size and shape as its body was in life. Or, number two, the soul retains its human form but expands in size. Is this recording? Ah, it is. I'm sorry. You should put a red light on this. I gotta get a better camera. I gotta get a better camera. Okay, anyway. No, this is a good camera. Okay. The soul retains its human form, but it expands in size, okay? So number one is soul, same size, same shape as the body. Number two, the soul retains its human form, so you still have a human form, eyes, nose, legs, ears, but it expands in size. Maybe like Adam and Eve, because Adam and Eve were much taller, but they're much taller, I don't know. Maybe this is larger. Maybe, no, 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 that's not good. I think I'm, I'm, I'm messing up. I should just read it as it is and not put my own stuff in it. No, no, the way you read it, it's just still creepy. The word for word is creepy to me. Okay, okay. Number three, oh, that, that says something about your kind of psychology. Ah, okay. Number three, the soul is tiny and human shaped, like a fairy. I love just fairy, take a bell. It's so funny. Even if I was an atheist, I don't believe that. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Number four, the soul is like a ball of flame or a cloud without definite form. Why was I thinking that? <laughs> right, which, one, which one do you choose? No, I'm just going based off of what I, what I was thinking of the last one. I, it's not something I would necessarily choose, but I, that's what I think of when I think of a soul, I don't know, for some reason. Of course. So what is the... What is Number the four, right? So you, what do you choose? I, I don't know. I'm just... Okay. You must choose. Hurry up. Okay, so based off of what I was thinking... Just hurry up. Just impulse. Anyway, it's four. 
Four, okay, you choose four. You at home, what do you choose? That's not my final answer, but go ahead. Okay, fine, this is not, this is now your time to choose uh, people at home. Choose which one. You're either the soul, same size, shape, it retains its human form, expands its size, the soul is tiny and human shaped like a fairy, or the soul is like a ball of flame or a cloud without definite form. Uh, we as Christians know that the soul is probably number four. <laughs> I also chose number four. I also chose number Now here is the key. We're gonna read all of them first, okay? All right. So this is the key to the greatest mystery. The image you have of the soul is a direct reflection of your own self-image. What's your self-image? I have no idea. Okay. I struggle with... Uh, Look in the mirror. What's your self-image? How, how do you see yourself? Brown. Okay, that's me. <laughs> I guess that's technically correct. Okay. The, <laughs> the nature of the soul you picture shows how you feel about yourself. How do you feel about yourself? I don't know. Okay, fine. All right, number one. I know, okay, fine. So I, you know what? Unconscious, it's good to be unconscious of certain things. Just take too much deep thought for me to think yeah, about. Yeah, and don't. You, but why, why, why worry yourself about all that stuff? Just worry about, you because know. Because that's how I think. Well, then you gotta stop it. I can't be nothing but who I am. Well, stop it. You know, there was, um, 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 who was it? With um, Bob Newhart. Bob Newhart did a sketch on Mad TV. And he plays a psychologist, right? And there's this girl, she comes in and she's kind of sad. She's like, oh, you, uh, doc, I got these problems. And he's like, his, his, his only advice, his only advice is like, okay, well, stop it. <laughs> and then he just repeats, just stop it. And she's like, huh? And he's like, well, no, but when I have this thing, this anxiety, and she's like, oh, well, anyway, my advice to you is just, just stop it. And it's a joke, I was laughing, but I think there's some truth in that. <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> easier said than done. I know you're saying, easier said than done. Where, where are your scars with, with, with pride? All right, number two. The soul retains its human form, but expands in size. Oh, I'm sorry, number one. The soul is the same size and shape as its body was in life. So if you chose number one, that you think that your soul is the same size and the shape as your body in life, then, I'm gonna read it verbatim, you have one of the most valuable things in the world, self-esteem. You accept yourself, faults and all, and love yourself for what you are. Always keep that same attitude as you go through life and keep discovering how much about you there is to love. I'm sorry that doesn't apply to you or me. <laughs> number two. The soul, if you chose number two, here is the, the key to number two. The soul retains its human form but expands in size. You are not satisfied with yourself as things stand today. A little man complex. Sorry. Yeah, well maybe. Yeah, but you're not making them feel any better, Regina. You're not making them feel any better. <laughs> who is that? The, the people who need help who are watching this. The people on YouTube. YouTube. On YouTube. Okay. Oh. And, uh, and uh, psychologists and people and crazy people. You are, you are not satisfied. Okay, if you believe that the soul retains its human form, but it gets bigger, expands in size, that means that you are not from satisfied with yourself as things stand to today. The little man comment is actually wrong. This, this says something a little different. So well, you, you were I was being funny. Oh, you're being funny. Okay, yeah. fine. I mean, so you should, we're just kidding, okay? So don't feel bad, you insecure people. You are not satisfied with yourself as things stand today. You feel that there are so many things you've yet to experience and achieve which makes you see the true self as much bigger than it is now. I remember one guy talking to Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins told a story about um, the homeless monk and the king. And the homeless monk, you know, he, he doesn't have any money. He doesn't, do, he just, whatever food people give him, he gives him just like Jesus. I said before, there's uh, wolves, uh, lambs among wolves. You know, take, them, take no food, take no money, laborers, you know, eat whatever they give you, stuff like that. And so this monk, this homeless monk, you know, he just goes town to town, spreading love and joy about, you know, God and stuff like that. And then, but then the king, the king, he just wants more and more and more. There's some guy in the audience, he's saying, he was talking about how he wanted a lot more things and stuff like that. It's very good. Tony Robbins, I'm telling you, man, I believe Tony Robbins is a Christian because his mentor is Jim Rohn. And Jim Rohn was a motivational coach and he was a Christian. All right, let's keep going. You are not satisfied with yourself as things stand today. You feel there are so many things you've yet to experience and achieve, which makes you see the true self as bigger than it is now. That dissatisfaction can be a source of inspiration. And Tony Robbins, he also, he also talks about just dissatisfaction. He talks about how being dissatisfied can, can be a good thing because it can, uh, it can motivate you to, to, uh, to, to, do, to do other things, to do, to do different things, to, to change, all right? So dissatisfaction, so negative emotions. I, I love shame, for example. I love the feeling of shame, the emotion of shame. Not too much, not too little. Everything was unreasonable, you know, of course. But shame can say, oh, well, that's a shameful thing I just did. I probably shouldn't do that again. When I uh, yelled at that person or when I did that, that, that was shameful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or when I was rude or I made an inappropriate joke, as I always do. Uh, <laughs> I feel embarrassed. And the, the embarrassment, oh, that's, that teaches me that, oh, I probably shouldn't say, you know, borderline racist things anymore as a joke. <laughs> 
Okay. I got problems. See, I'm probably crazier than you again. You think you're crazy. I'm the crazier one. Okay. <laughs> Psychologist. I'm <laughs> manic. Judger. Judgment. So judgmental. Okay. That dissatisfaction can be a source of inspiration if you learn to control it. It can be a source of inspiration. So that dissatisfaction can be a source of inspiration if you learn to control it. Otherwise, it will only haunt you as a sense of incompleteness. So that's a warning. You can be dissatisfied. You can either let it haunt you and as a sense of incompleteness, or it can be a source of inspiration. That's your choice. You can't blame Obama. You can't blame the weather. You can't blame the government. You can't blame anything. You could, I guess, but how, how is blaming anything going to help you? You, know, you got to take personal responsibility for your life. And just change. I, don't I don't know. I'm done. Now, let's tell you, Robbie. says it better than me. Number three, the soul is tiny and human shaped like a fairy. That will be interesting. Yes, and guess what? It? You want you want you want to try to guess what it says? I can't even imagine. That's why I said it's interesting. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Despite all your good qualities, you still have not discovered what it is within you that makes you great. Now, we as Christians understand and know that we are all given spiritual gifts. Every single living soul on this planet has been given spiritual gifts by the Holy Spirit. Do you agree? Amen. I'm in Venice. He's not in the nomination. Do you agree? Hey, I'm sorry. I haven't gotten no sleep last night. I'm a little bit dazed. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Where were you last night? I'm okay, okay. So now, let me think. You tend to wonder, what's wrong with me? But you never seem to be able to put your finger on the answer. What's wrong with you is you're human, just like the rest of us. And that means being imperfect. And that, and that means imperfect. Accept that. Accept your imperfection. Accept that, and you'll begin to see that being human has its good points too. It's our flaws that make us interesting. It's why our do I not get number three? I don't know. Right, I don't know if it's because I had no sleep last night or what. Despite all your good qualities, okay, this old, despite all your good qualities, you still have not discovered what it is within you that makes you great. What that do with a fairy? It's not so much, it's, they're smarter than us. Just don't, don't read about the fairy, read, just read the answer. Regina. All right, number four. The soul is a ball or flame or a cloud without definite form. Okay, that's what you chose, that's what I chose as well. You aren't upset by your shortcomings. You aren't upset by your shortcomings or proud of your strengths. And you can't be bothered in comparing yourself with others. In fact, you aren't very interested in issues of the self at all. That may be because, that may be because you're, ex you're incredibly shallow. Are you incredibly shallow? I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Or because you're profoundly wise. But even that doesn't seem very important to you. Read it together. You aren't accept by your shortcomings or proud of your strengths, and you can't be bothered in comparing yourself with others. In fact, you aren't very interested in issues of the self at all. That may be because you're incredibly shallow or because you're profoundly wise, but even that doesn't seem very important to you. Let's eat. I'm so hungry. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah? All right.